Hi, I'm Virginia. And I'm Nanette, and welcome to The Lively Office. The Lively Office is where we help managers and businesses create raving fan employees. And why do we want raving fan employees? Because we want raving fan customers to ching. <laughs> and in today's episode, we are going to talk about surviving the workday and all the pain points. But before we do that, we have a motto that every day we try to be a better versions of ourselves that we were the day before. So I'm going to ask Nanette a question. Nanette, what did you do today to be a better version of yourself than you were yesterday? Well, I think that reading books is good for your brain. And we always talk, talk, talk about reading books. And I never actually pick one up. Or if I do, it's before I go to bed. And I do like three minutes before I fall asleep. So my new thing is I am actually listening to books to get that, that data and all that good stuff in my head. So that's my new thing is to listen to a book and get it done when I'm driving in the car or when I'm just doing things, working around the house. So my new thing is listening to books because I'm too lazy to read them. Okay. <laughs> so that's what you did today. Okay. I like it. That was a decision I made today. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. Mine is not as, um, as, uh, amazing, I guess <laughs> today. The only thing I tried to do is not beat myself up. Like I would talk myself, I would talk down to myself when I don't get certain tasks done that I want to get done. So I, caught myself in that cycle doing that today. And I was like, okay, don't, I can't do this. Let's not, um, talk myself down. It's fine. You accomplished good things. And even this small little movement is a movement in the right direction. Yay. You did that. So <laughs> right, I didn't good. beat myself up today. Like I normally would. So <laughs> that was my better version of myself. Normally right, it's like something it. like don't cuss. <laughs> I didn't cuss today at all. So <laughs> I'm not going for that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Sunday. I guess I didn't cuss today either. No, I'm lying. I cussed. <laughs> I was bad. I was better yesterday. <laughs> anyway, you overachiever you. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. It's sick. And um, well, you know what? Sometimes, you know, I have to say that I, I did not curse as much until I started getting frustrated at work. And I guess that's the topic of today's subject, surviving the work day, because right. I am not a person who normally curses either, but it was like my way of getting my frustrations out. It was my way of, I, I, I don't expressing myself. I get that's fair, you know, but it's not, it was never, it's not a positive way to express myself. So I, you know, it was like, I had this and it wasn't all the time. It was just when something was frustrating me, I'd find myself, you know, going down this path that is not, you know, it's not pleasant. It's not it really doesn't represent who I am. So the, that kind of goes along with our first topic, right. On surviving the workday, which is finding your trustworthy confidence. So for those of you who are listening, you may I've already assumed this, <laughs> the woman I'm talking to here, Miss Nanette is my trustworthy work confidant. And she has been for years. And, uh, I don't know that I'd make it through the work day without her. <laughs> and the key word being trustworthy, you just need that person that you can just dump everything on that understands your frustrations, but it's not going to, um, judge you or go back and tell all your business to everybody else in the workplace. Cause sometimes it's getting those frustrations out. It's all you need. So, right. So the key also, just to remember that it's that one trustworthy person. If you have some work frustration and you may have a lot of people that you trust, and I certainly do, but there were just certain levels of things very specific to my job that I could only bring to Nanette. Like I could only talk to her about them and because I knew they weren't going anywhere. And if you say that to other people, then they might have this distorted view of you. You may lose um, maybe position power a little bit with that. People have a different perception of you because like of one bad day speaking in like some kind of, you know, way or talking about somebody in some kind of way. So it, you know, it, you know, you're saying it out of anger and being like this imperfect human. So if you want to survive the work day and you have to get stuff out and you do, you have to vent, find just that one trustworthy confidant and uh, keep it there. And just, you know, for everybody else, it's just sunshine and roses, you know, right? exactly. Yeah. Cause we've told each other some pretty, um, some pretty crazy stuff about our work days. I'm sure. 
So I mean, I can think of some things I've said about the boss and different things that I do not want repeated for sure. Right. Maybe some (laughs) things about some peers. Yeah, definitely some peers too. So that was our number one on your list. We have a, we have a list of about six things that we thought were the most important. So that was number one. And number two is focus on what you can control, what you can control. And sometimes we feel so out of control at work. There's all these factors coming at us and all these things. And the only things that we can control are that handful of things that we can control. So just focus on those things. Focus right. on your attitude, your, your environment that you can control, the people around you. Right. The decision that you can make where your authority, you know, begins and where does your authority end? And it's not always associated with your particular job title. You know, there's some times that you just become the expert at some particular thing and you earn more authority. So, I mean, if you can use that to get work done successfully and efficiently and happily, you know, focus on those things. I think as humans that we look at the entire picture and it becomes overwhelming. And then it just, especially like if it starts, your day starts like that, like your day starts with a problem and you start like, I mean, it'll, it'll start like, um, what is that called? It'll just start growing. Snowball. Because, yeah. What is it called? I told, a snowball. Yes. A it snowball. Okay, I forgot about snowballs. I've been in Florida too long. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen one, but I mean, that's, that's the idea, right? <laughs> right. Right. So it'll turn into a snowball and like, you don't need that to happen at work. You know, if it's, you start your Monday that way and then it may trickle to the whole week and you've got this messed up week and you've spent so much time there, you know, why, why do that? Take a, take time out, take a breather, and focus on what you can control, maybe even write it down so you can kind of help yourself regroup. Okay, I can do these things about this situation. So that's point number two to surviving the work day. Yes, and point number three is celebrate the small accomplishments. I think going back to what Virginia said earlier, sometimes we beat ourselves up when we don't do everything on our list or we don't do all the things or that big goal we didn't uh, achieve. If you make a small, a list of small things you can do to get to the big goal and then celebrate every single one of those little things, pat yourself on the back, tell yourself how great you are. Cause it's all those little small things that add up, right. That get to the big thing. And sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit for those small things. True. Let me tell you what I do. Okay. And that, and this okay. is really kind of like, at first I thought it was dumb, but then somebody else who I think is really smart told me they did it too. And I felt like, yay, I've got validation. <laughs> So I will get things accomplished and I will write them down. Normally I write, I wrote them down beforehand. Like I need to do this, this, and this, but I, I didn't hit a lot of those things because other things came up. I will write them down just across the wall. <laughs> so that's me celebrating my small accomplishments. <laughs> I'm the worst about writing them down. I try to write everything down and I forget to look at it. So then I... <laughs> Okay. I mean, the, that's fair too. I'm the worst at that. I mean, and everybody says you need to write a list. I'm like, I'll write a list and I'll spend so much time writing a list. I could have got stuff done. I don't know. I'm gonna, that's one of the things I'm going to have to work on. I'm going to do it in my phone and checking it off as apps, but just writing I'm a list. I'm not good at that. I am not. I, I am awful at trying to use my phone for like reminders or for, um, for any, I'm just not good at that. It's gotta be, it's, it's the steno pad or this like type pad here with like the, it's like already numbered and it's got these little boxes next to it already pre-done. So yeah, I, can I can't like, check, find, check, check. as you very well know, I'll write them in a book and they can't figure out which book it's in. <laughs> but that might even help you just do a recall. Cause there, that, that's one of the things I do. I, I will certainly write something down just to, you know, help yeah. with recall. And then like, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, and, I'll I do celebra- that. and then I'll celebrate that because I'm like, yay, I remembered to do something. <laughs> And that's, I think that's the only reason I write things down is just to remember them. It's like taking notes in college. But if I try to go back and find those notes, meh, I have no idea where they are. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of that whole conversation is was celebrate the smallest accomplishments. Yay. The smallest accomplishments, uh, they, they, they mount up to the big one. Absolutely. Be nice to yourself. Be good to yourself. Talk to yourself like your five-year-old self. Yeah. So the fourth thing we're going to talk about is don't skip your lunch. Um, So guilty of that for absolute for years, for the majority of my career, 
And I, the stress mounted. I felt that I live, breathe and ate work. There was nothing to my life except for work. It was work, sleep, work, sleep. And I didn't feel alive. I know that's kind of a, maybe a, over, it seems like an exaggeration, but um, it really and truly is how I felt for a long period. And then Nanette entered my work life and we went to lunch <laughs> and that, it, it, it was, it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. Even if you ended up having to stay a few hours longer because it took you a minute to get back to it, to get the work done, but it just made you feel alive made you appreciate you know, the day, you know, if you're stuck in an office, in a physical office, if that's where you actually work, you know, it may be in our office didn't have windows. So it was like a dungeon. So we're in this dungeon type office with no windows and you're there early morning. You don't see the sun because you didn't take lunch. And then, you know, darn time changes. You go home and it's dark again. And you're like, what? I came here when it was dark. And so, <laughs> you, you know, it turns you into some kind of, yeah. yeah, it's like a work vampire. Like, don't do it. Don't skip your lunch. Just don't take the time off. Just enjoy the peace. Don't answer calls at lunch unless you absolutely have to. And then make up that time again, too, for yourself. You work hard, you earn it. Right. It also just helps with your mood. You know, if you're, if you're having those struggles, it helps you get separated from all the drama and the stress and get, it's almost like recentering, just use that time to recenter yourself and get put, you know, get put back in that right place, that right state of mind. Cause I was the worst about it. I don't think I used my lunch to catch up on all the stuff that I didn't have time for the rest of the day. I would read email. I would do all the, all the little things I didn't get to have a chance to get done. And I thought in my mind that I was helping myself and, and de-stressing myself by getting those things done. But then I realized that then, then I just was work, work, work all the time. And what's that movie? Uh, all, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. It's like literally, <laughs> is it, is it that on like uh, the shining or something? I don't know, but <laughs> oh, I was always afraid to watch the shining. <laughs> like I cannot watch the shining. That, yeah. that, Oh, that actor goodness. terrifies me. <laughs> I think it was on The Shining. Somebody I'm sure will tell us how crazy I am on that one. But there is a phrase that that's, uh, you know, all work and no play. And I, that's how I felt. I felt like you just need to, to raise your mood, and which goes into number five, emotions are contagious. Right. Uh, you know, if you got that worker that's just, oh, so miserable at work every day in and out, you know, his, his misery like seems like spread throughout, throughout the workforce. And the same goes with being happy. You know, we, 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 absolutely. me and Virginia have shown that over and over, like we can change the whole, the whole environment with just going absolutely. to be ridiculous. I mean, we, in truth, we actually like put that to a test and I'm going to, I'm going to share a story. I'm going to share okay. Oklahoma story. Okay. So this is kind of like it was, and it really did feel like a test because we, we were really having a rough day and we really needed a break. And you could tell everyone around us was in a similar situation. So we are at this after hours kind of bar type thing and for our work function. And we see a bunch of people like all isolated, like individuals, so individual. And I was on one that day and I was just like, I need to have fun. I mean, I know I'm going to have fun with Nanette. But like, I need everyone around me to have fun so I can have the level of fun that I'm looking for. So it was just something as simple as us, the two of us talking to each other and laughing and then watching people watch us. So, and this is something you can do. Like, you don't have to be a supervisor or a manager to do this. You could just, you know, be the part of the workforce. Yay. Control your environment. You have to be there too. take, take action, take, yeah. take, take action to, yeah. yeah, take action to survive your workday. So I noticed that there was this female sitting by herself and she looked at us and she, I caught her eye and I was like, ding, ding. And I'm like, Hey, why don't you come and join us? And she's like, ah, I was like, come on. And I just kind of, you know, started being my pushy tourist self turned on the tourist. <laughs> and you know, she came and then there was someone else and then it just continued and it continued. I mean, it, it was just our energy. The more people who joined us, the more energy and positive energy we became. So we sat there, the two of us and 
before the night was through, it was like literally almost everyone at the bar was there except for this competing table that all knew each other and came in together of like eight or nine females. Right. It was like yeah. a huge group. So it was them who all knew each other, you know, and we're like watching this group of friends enjoy each other. Like, well, that must be nice. We're all strangers. <laughs> but then we became like this big group of friends. And then this is like on the first night. So here we're doing this on the first night. And like, it's so true that emotions were contagious. We had all these people who were like super sad, faced, miserable, tired, exhausted, low energy. And all it did was us two talking, laughing, and then it became this thing. And it ended up being like several days. Like we would like meet each other up or see each other in the hallway, yeah. walking from, you know, class to class. And, and we were like, Hey, and it was just like this excitement. You felt like, you know, young in high school again. And like, new oh, this like, huh? yeah, it's we like friend, a new you know? friend group. Yeah, it was new friends. It was great. I think by the time our, um, I think it was like four and a half days of training, right? Yeah. By the time this training was done on our last night, we took a huge group selfie and there was probably like what, 17 people? Probably. Yeah. It's all people that never would have known each other had we not all got everybody together. We took every straggler that was in that place and we made us all friends. Right. And it was, and it all came from emotions being contagious and the yeah. energy that you, that you gave. And it just started with smile, just starts with a smile. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was a fun, that was a really fun time too. That was yeah, a good that time. Was, we did put that to the test. Yeah. So, and it goes so. both ways, unfortunately. So that, you know, if, if you take it on, you've got to, you've got to combat that, that bad attitude with that smile and, and keep it moving and, and drag other people into your, your, into your emotions. So to help your, to help your work day. Right. Right. And that goes back to, um, then our final one, our sixth, um, concept of surviving the work day is just being grateful. Be grateful for the fact that you have a job, you know, I mean, it may not be the dream job of the, of your life. And I, you know, when I wanted to grow up, you know, I had ideas of what I was going to be, but that did not work out, but you know, yay. Cause I'm grateful. Cause it, I still have an amazing life. I have an amazing family, amazing children, a, an amazing husband. So I being grateful for that. I have amazing friends. <laughs> So if you can just find something to be grateful for, it'll change your entire day. Like be grateful for the job. Be grateful for that coworker who helped you with this or that. Be grateful for that customer who looks forward to seeing you and smiles and you light up their day. So I think uh, um, I'm going to throw that to Nanette <laughs> if you have anything else. I think else being to... grateful, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to focus on the negative when you're trying to focus on the grateful moments and even your employees, you know, if you're a manager or a supervisor, or even, even if you're not, and you you have coworkers, you know, that little, that little gesture to be thankful for what they do for you. You know, sometimes people just need that little boost. And if they know you're grateful for them, that gives them some, you know, that, that, that makes them grateful to come to work just so you're there to, to help them out, you know, encourage each other, be grateful, write little notes. Um, and I think that's, if you're focusing on the positive, you'll find more positive too. I agree. I agree. And, um, I have to say that when I catch myself going down like a dark path, because I was triggered some in some way, uh, if I stop and think I'm like, okay, what, you know, let's, let's find gratitude for, for this terrible, terrible situation. Even today, I actually had a little piece of gratitude. I felt like it was ugly to say it. I'm not sure if I even want to say it on this, on this um, recording here on this podcast, on this episode, but because like, how could you find gratefulness in something that's so, so dark and horrid? And then I thought I almost felt weirdly guilty for having like a gratefulness for this, for this dark and horrid situation. And I guess maybe it's, you know, why not talk about it now? I mean, it's part of, you know, sometimes we have that at work, surviving the work day. But um, after I was done beating myself up for finding gratefulness for it, I'm like, why, why was I upset about finding gratefulness in, in that? I'm not saying gratefulness does not mean that you're, that you're 
a bad situation that you're happy that a bad situation happened, I guess is what I'm saying for somehow in my mind for a moment there, I guess I was translating gratefulness, finding gratefulness out of a horrid situation to be meaning that I was happy that the situation happened. And then I was like, I don't know. I don't think anyone no, thinks that's like that. COVID though, Virginia. I mean, there's so many people that are grateful because they got to recognize how much family really meant to them by staying home so much with their family and okay, nobody's fair. grateful for COVID, but they're grateful for the situations and the things that brought us together. You're grateful for, you know, um, just realizing what life's about. Maybe sometimes we forget all that stuff. So it brings, it brings the, the good, it brings the things that are important to the forefront when we have bad times. Well, I think, you know, now that you're saying that, um, I don't know if all of our listeners have heard this, but the, um, HR industry is calling this, this period of time for COVID now that she's bringing up, they're calling it the great resignation. So I had, you know, a lot of thought put into that great resignation and what that what does that mean? The great resignation, like outside of the obvious, but thinking to myself, you know, it cannot simply be people's fear of getting sick. That's created the great resignation. I really think like what you're saying is that their response, their reaction, which is the one thing you can control is your own reaction. So their reaction to the state of the pandemic was a reaction of, you know what, this job makes me unhappy. And I only don't know how much time I have with my family, or I don't feel like I'm being used, you know, well in this job, whatever reasons people resign, you know, they're unhappy or they're not being used to their full, you know, strengths and stuff, whatever those reasons are, I think part of it was that they, you know, recognize the value of time with their loved ones. So uh, I know it's kind of off topic there, but part of being, you know, being grateful for your family, but just to, um, you know, in light of the great resignation, we still all have to work to make money unless you're just super lucky to have a rich uncle or something, you know? (laughs) So find that job. If you happen to be one of those listeners, who's not currently like employed and, you know, do a job for yourself, work for yourself, do what makes you happy. Just remember wherever, wherever you at, wherever you're at, you know, if you're the boss, your employees may be, you may think you're great. Your workplace is great, but they may be thinking, Hey, I need to listen to this podcast on surviving the work day. So, (laughs) So, you know, have a, have some realization or something, you know, um, in either, in either one of those ways, like you're, you, if you quit your job, cause you want to spend time with your family, that's wonderful, but you, know, you still have to pay your bills. So go back to work if you have to, and then try some of these things, these methods that we're talking about that have been successful for ourselves to have fun at work, to have a good time at work, to do what you do, which is best, what you were hired for because somebody saw something in you and they knew you could do it and you can do it and you're the best at doing it. So when you're having that rough time, find that trusty, um, confident, focus on what you control yourself, your reactions, the things that you've been, that have been placed in your care, celebrating your small accomplishments, eat your lunch. (laughs) And even if you don't eat the lunch, take the time just for yourself. Right. Right. There's many yeah. times we went to lunch and we didn't eat. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hobby Lobby. We did uh, that. <laughs> Hobby Lobby got most of our lunches. I think <laughs> true. Love that store. <laughs> so, so, um, Nanette, you want to talk about some quick wins, right? So in every episode, we try to give you some quick wins and some things that you can do right away to submit, to make some changes. And one of the first things that we thought of was smile. Smile, smile, smile. We talked about that that when our story about our training and how we brought everybody in and the way you look on the outside and that energy that you put out there, just that makes all the difference in the world. And then focus on the good. Uh, Focus on the good things. Focus on what you can control. If you focus on the bad and what you can't control, that's going to create those emotions that just keep us moving in the wrong direction. And, and the next thing that we had for quick wins was brighten somebody else's day. You know, we're all in this together. 
Um, and we, we don't want to be miserable and we don't want our coworkers to be miserable either. So find something to brighten somebody else's day, something, some little gesture, anything. Like I can remember um, the girl that we work with. One of the things that she loves is crushed ice. So um, she like loves it from 7-Eleven. So just bringing her in a little cup of that ice from 7-Eleven just makes her day. So just little things like that. Yeah, that's, that's actually like a really good point because it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to brighten someone's day. No, I mean, it could be simply recognizing that they got a good haircut, you know, yeah. and you're like, oh, they noticed I got a good hair. <laughs> I look good. Like, yeah, look at my hair. Yeah, that's so I mean, that, true. Yeah. That brightens my day. I'm like, yay, somebody noticed that I put effort, you know, <laughs> into, into coming, uh, you know, to work today, trying to look good or, you know, it's, and it's all within our control to be kind and, uh, enjoy our work and, um, be lively. <laughs> so, lively. so we want you to share your stories with us. And what is our hashtag for this hashtag survival? So go on any of our, um, social media platforms. It's at the lively office. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. And if you use that hashtag and tell us any of the stories that you use to survive the workday, we may mention them here and it'll help us with going forward with what we talk about. Um, and also we like to end every one of our episode with um, three things that we're grateful for. Um, and we kind of break it up a little bit into random categories. So um, what I'm going to do for my home life, I am grateful that my husband washes his own clothes. That's number one. <laughs> and, um, uh, his, his mother trained him well. So I, I don't know why I thought of that, but that's what I'm grateful for at home life. Um, for my work life, I am grateful that I have, um, people that I enjoy working with. Um, and you might not know who that is. And then... <laughs> And then for a random, just what I'm grateful for, just any old thing, I am grateful for um, Reese's Easter eggs because it's my, it's coming up on Easter and it's my favorite, favorite, um, favorite dessert <laughs> of all time. If you call that a dessert, but that's my favorite. <laughs> I did not know that was your favorite Re Reese's really Reese's Easter eggs. Cause there's something different about the ones that are holiday. I don't know what it is. <laughs> is it like a, is it bigger? Cause aren't Reese's like tiny? Yeah, and there's more peanut butter in it. So the peanut butter to chocolate ratio changes a little bit with the holiday <laughs> ones. It's less chocolate, more peanut I'm butter. Like, gonna have to like write that down. I absolutely did not <laughs> did not know that though. It was awesome. Yeah, well, for my birthday, one of my kids one time um, uh, that I coached, she saved them. My birthday's in July. So that's like way off from Easter. And she made me an Easter egg cake. I, I literally had and put candles on top. It was all chocolate Reese's Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's too fun. All right. So, all what's, right, so what's my great home life. Okay. So I actually going to start with work. So my okay. work gratefulness is I am grateful for the ability to work remotely, especially with the prices of gas and the gas guzzling car that I have. So yay. Um, I home life, what I am grateful for. I am grateful that when my husband looks at me as some kind of way, he can tell when I need a good cup of coffee <laughs> and without asking, he'll bring it to me. So I'm absolutely grateful for that. And for the random gratefulness, I will say that I am grateful for the traffic this evening going to my event because I was already late due to forgetfulness. And I actually made it there as a, like before the people, which I still don't know how I did that. And I'm grateful for that particular thing, but I paid for it on the return, which was double time, but I'm still grateful because I made it home. <laughs> All right. So we want to thank you for being here with us on the lively office. We encourage you to do the gratefulness exercise. It makes for a better day. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And don't forget to share your stories of things that you do to survive your work day with the hashtag survival. Have a good night.